Okay, so I have started the recording for this session, and so I would start uh, this this topic today. So good evening, everyone. Um, first of all, I would like to welcome you all uh, on this session on the topic: the emergence of electric mobility and the need for future grid to build a sustainable sustainable ecosystem. My name is Arvind Singh. I am a senior application engineer in MathWorks. Along with me, my co-presenters are Mr. Prasanna Deshpande. So he leads the team of application engineers in Pune and Hyderabad. And along with him is Shripat. He is the principal application engineer in MathWorks and Karishma. And she is she she belongs to the marketing uh, team. Now, uh, before going into the session, I would like to uh, set uh, the stage for this uh, presentation. Uh, where first of all, I would like to welcome you all to the Sparkle 2022 and would like to begin by talking a little bit about our association as a knowledge partner to KPIT. So as you know that KPIT is an organization that believes that there is a vast potential in the field of mobility and energy. And the vision of KPIT is to reimagining mobility with you for creating for creation of a cleaner, smarter and safer world. And therefore, KPIT organizes organizes the Sparkle event where uh, all the budding entrepreneurs and engineers uh, get a platform and are connected to an incubation ecosystem. On the other hand, we MathWorks, we believe uh, that the engineers and scientists are the important uh, part of society where they are working day and night uh, and they are working in order to make our life uh, easy, easy and then uh, good. And therefore, MathWorks believes that uh, in order to accelerate the pace of engineering and science, we have built um, built a leading software. We are a mathematical computing software uh, uh, company, uh, which helps engineers and scientists uh, to work on their project. Now, uh, whereas KPIT gives you a platform in order to share your ideas, MathWorks is associated in this cause by providing you our tools in order to realize the ideas that you have. And in this partnership, we are offering uh, free access to our MathWorks tool where you can use it to uh, implement your ideas. And it also, we are also there to work with you and provide you advice on your project and also gives you access to many MathWorks resources. Now, a little bit about MathWorks. So MathWorks is, is, a, uh, is a company with more than 4 million users in more than 185 countries. Our headquarters is in Natick, US. And uh, we have a foot uh, strength of more than 5,000 uh, staffs, employees, which are um, which are located in 33 and more uh, location in the world. And it's a privately held firm with more than uh, one plus billion of revenues. Now, a little bit about uh, MathWorks and Simulink. Simulink, as you know, that MathWorks is a uh, is a programming environment, so which helps you to develop your algorithm. So this, this particular MATLAB is like another high level language. For example, if you're working on Python, you're working on C, C++. So MATLAB similarly is a, is a scripting language where you can develop your own algorithm. You can perform um, analysis, you can perform uh, data visualization and can create reports and then, uh, and then use it for developing many algorithm in the areas of probably uh, autonomous driving, machine learning, deep learning, et cetera. So when we talk about Simulink, Simulink on the other hand is a graphical environment. The difference is that here you use blocks in order to realize your application. And it is mainly suited where you want to simulate your application that you want to work on. So you can create blocks without the need of even having the hardware, you create your own logic. And on this simulation platform, you're able to realize your control logic and test them. And then adding to it, uh, the Simulink is supported by more than 100 add-on products which can do specialized tasks. For example, you have a dedicated toolbox for computer vision, image processing, machine learning, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Now, just to give a little breadth of where our products are currently in the market. So we have more than 20 industries which are currently using MATLAB and Simulink in their project. And it, 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 it ranges from your aerospace, defense, automotive, energy production, financial services, and also in various domains. In various domains, for example, autonomous driving, you can see MATLAB and Simulink are being used for developing applications. And uh, it is also, it's, we are also happy to share that more than 6,500 university and colleges have are using MATLAB and Simulink as a part of their curriculum. So there, the student 
are been taught MATLAB and Sibling, and then they are being uh, trained on on the various aspect. Now, I would like to draw, <clears throat> for the sake of this uh, presentation, I would like to draw your attention to the to the small subset of the application that is the automotive application here, and which further goes to our theme of what we are going to share with you. So I, I'm going to first <clears throat> explain with you that what are the various digital transformation that ha that we have seen from the ages. For example, earlier when you talk about the automotive, the car, it was purely mechanical. All the, for example, your fuel injection was mechanical and all the other things were mechanical. And then with the first digital transformation, software came as an aid to enhance the performance of the vehicle. So what it did is that uh, using uh, electronic control unit using software, we were able to assist mechanical system to do complex thing. For example, power window is the best example where by the push of a single button, you can uh, open and close the window of a car or probably they are very much complex, uh, uh, say application like emergency braking system, airbag systems, and then electric power steering system. So with this, the first digital transformation occurred where the hardware was graduated using software and it was enhanced supported by the software. Now today, we're talking about the second digital transformation where now the software is defining the vehicle. So for example, I'll talk specifically about electrification. How software defines the vehicle is that now in an electric vehicle, software helps you to, uh, uh, to implement those logic which defines when you want to do the battery charging. For example, in electric vehicle, you know there is a battery, there is a motor, the motor is being propelled by the battery and hence the car works. But this is not that much simple. It's a very complex system where inside the software is working hard to decide how to charge your battery, how to control the propulsion of the vehicle, and then also look into the safety features. Now the software is also defining uh, the various other concepts like the automated driving. For example, if it's a driverless car where the software is driving the vehicle, or it's a or it's a software assisted driving where there are various sensors in a vehicle which helps you to drive for example rear sensor which helps you to park your vehicle and then the third piece uh, as an example of second digital transformation would be connected vehicles where you can see that all the vehicles are are connected to the cloud and then there is an inf information exchange between all the other vehicles on the road and also to the server for so that you can have an improved driving experience with that now there are various other application that today um, you can you can look uh, which you can realize using MathWorks tool which can be in form of artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, reinforcement learning, predictive maintenance. So for the sake of today's just to draw the scope for today's discussion because just when we went through the all, all the um, topics that were the part of this sparkle, we understood that uh, the focus areas are the electrification areas. So in today's uh, into this session, we will talk about more about what are the mega trend in the electrification. And if you want to develop an electrification project, what, what, how you can simulate it using MATLAB and Simulink and understand the third part would be what are the various infrastructure uh, challenges that you see while uh, doing an electrification project, the grid and other things. So I think I would pass this control to Shripad where he can start talking about the first thing is first thing, which is the mega trend in the electrification area. Thank you, Arvind. Yes, Shripad, I'm making you uh, the presenter. Hey, uh, Shripad, uh, why don't you introduce yourself to the audience still sharing your screen? Sure, happy to, Prasanna. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, hope you uh, ho hope you have joined from the start. Uh, but just to reintroduce myself, I'm Shripad Chandrachud, uh, part of the application engineering team at MathWorks. Uh, I've been with MathWorks for almost 14 years now, uh, focusing on applications in electric mobility, power conversion, and grid simulation. So it's a pleasure to be here with all of you today uh, to take you through the rest of the presentation along with my colleagues, Prasanna, as well as Arvind. Uh, so let me quickly share my screen so we can continue. Arvind, just to quickly check with you, the screen is coming through okay? Yes, yes, Shripad, I can see your screen. Perfect. So thank you, uh, Arvind, for the introduction. And uh, as you mentioned, our topic for today is mainly focused on electrification. And rightfully so, 
electrification is the mega trend that is driving transformation across a number of different industries. And since we are talking primarily about automotive industry today, if we think of it from that lens, uh, not just four wheelers, but two wheeler, three wheelers, passenger cars, uh, trucks, buses, or even aircraft, right? They're all transforming from the traditional mechanical or hydraulic actuation to electrical actuation. And electric mobility overall is gaining a lot of importance. Now, if we want e-mobility to be truly successful, then we have to think not just about the EVs, but the entire ecosystem that is going to power these EVs, like the charging infrastructure, uh, the transmission and distribution grid, where these chargers will be integrated, as well as the new sources of energy, such as solar and wind, right? Because at the end of the day, if we are powering these EVs by burning more coal, we are not doing any good to the environment, are we? So uh, really uh, thinking about the big challenges of climate change, global warming, when we holistically think about these areas, electric mobility and grid modernization, uh, they kind of have a symbiotic relationship with each other. We have to make innovations, improvements on all aspects of this ecosystem. So to truly make electric vehicle a successful transition within the mobility uh, that we all have come to know. Now, all of you, when you submitted your topics, we were, we were going through the list of topics and we saw a number of interesting ones that included fuel cells, uh, solar power systems, or even in the EV domain, developing power trends or new kinds of charges. So what we are going to do today is uh, help you realize how you can use MATLAB and Simulink as the simulation platforms for designing these kinds of, uh, these kinds of ideas that you have in your mind. Now, in the context of grid modernization that I was just referring to, uh, if you look at the countries that are uh, relatively ahead of the curve in terms of electric mobility adoption, you can also see new paradigms emerging in terms of how the electric grid looks like. In the traditional sense, we always had those big coal-fired or natural gas-powered generating stations on the outskirts of the city, and then the transmission infrastructure bringing that power to the urban centers. But now in the new paradigm, the shift is happening in terms of distributed sources of energy, like rooftop solars or battery, like a Tesla power wall, as an example, electric vehicles that will be you know, that will be connected to the grid at various points in time, whether it's in a residential community or whether it's a public charging station or different work environments that afford the capability to connect those electric vehicles. So with that new paradigm, there will be more and more uh, distributed sources of energy that will have their localized controls and there will also be need for supervisory controls and energy management system that allows these things to seamlessly integrate to, with the traditional electric grid that we know. So in today's session, we will be looking at various different examples, such as this one that is in front of you right now, and how to build these kinds of models using MATLAB and Simulink environment so that you can test out your ideas, you can, you can explore different what-if scenarios and truly understand the idea that you're pitching in is that viable? Okay, so so that that's the plan for rest of the hour, if you will. But let let's take a step back and understand why simulation is important. What is the role of simulation in grid modernization or vehicle electrification? So the first and foremost thing that I would like you to take away is simulation helps you speed up the journey from an idea to implementation. Because now, as you have these different ideas in mind, uh, you probably may not have access to the hardware on which you're going to prototype these ideas or to realize it for testing purposes. But simulation can give you an easy means to start virtual prototyping of these ideas, to test out your control logic as an example, to see if it will work on the, uh, on the system that will be operationalized in the field. Secondly, it gives you a means to iterate on these ideas using what we call as the model-based design approach. And Prasanna will take you into further details of that model-based design approach, but at a high level, it refers to using model 
as a golden reference where you start designing your systems with virtual prototypes in a simulation environment okay so you front load your design decisions with a lot of what if scenarios and when you are happy with the kind of analysis that you're doing with the kind of algorithms that you're developing then you prototype that sim virtual simulation model with a real time box as an example where you where you kind of run hardware in the loop type of simulations and then as you gradually de-risk your ideas you build confidence in them then you go to the production state maybe deploying your logic to embedded systems platforms but not just for the design purposes you can also use simulation as a digital twin for the system or a vehicle that you have operationalized and you can stream live data to monitor the performance or even even do predictive maintenance of the vehicle or any different asset that you might be building and finally it gives you a means to test out technology readiness where you are working in the renewable system power electronics battery management what have you and this concept of technology readiness is not new it was actually pioneered by nasa many years ago and it talks about how different ideas innovation go from fundamental science to proven technology or other way to look at it is how do they go from research especially in academia space to commercialization in the industrial world and often times there is a gap as you can see uh, in this picture on the slide which is which is referred to as valley of death where a lot of ideas die or they they don't see the light of the day right so our goal is to understand what are these levels of technology readiness starting with basic principles concept developing a proof of concept and then all the way to uh, doing uh, deploying that system out in the field now there are many things that help make these ideas go to the commercialization phase one is uh, good collaboration between academic world and industry world and i think uh, this competition like kpit sparkle is a good platform where you are getting to work with industry partners to uh, to uh, to develop your ideas and see what what all of those can be realized further in an industrial setting other way to look at it is to use tools that are common to both the academic world and the industrial setting so that you can you can quickly develop your ideas and then hand off them for the prototyping and uh, the future deployment in the field so one of the ways to do that is by using virtual simulation platform like matlab and simulate so i've talked quite a bit uh, about simulation or why uh, simulation is important uh, but the fundamental thing that i would like you to take away is it's all about building right simulations or simulations with the right fidelity uh, you know on a lighter note there is a saying in the modeling world that all models are wrong but some are useful so what does that exactly mean it means depending upon what value do you want to get what kind of study you want to realize you have to be first able to develop the simulation that reflects the reality of your system that represents the right level of complexity that you would need to build so that the results that you draw from this simulation are meaningful and there are multiple dimensions to this when you are working to develop a virtual prototype you might be working at the component level like battery motor or some kind of power electronics device or you might be working at a system level like electric car or a solar power systems the other way to look at it is you might start at first principles or physics level but then eventually you might build controls around that model and want to deploy that as a software on an on an embedded chip right so there are th these different dimensions between which you will be going so you need a simulation platform that is going to allow you to model what you need while maintaining architectural consistency you also need something that is going to allow you to connect with different tools that are out there as an example i'm a power electronics engineer so i work with spice someday when i want detailed simulation that i'm going to then realize on a pcb 
I work with Simulink, and I also work with different hardwares like Texas Instruments. So we need a tool chain that will connect these different simulation platforms that are offered by different companies that are out there so that you can build end-to-end -end workflow of designing these systems. Okay, now with that in mind, let's think about what are the modeling approaches that are commonly used in the industry or even in the academia. Uh, the two main things are first principles modeling using mathematical equations. So here you can think about using a programming language or a block diagram environment or even physical networks to construct a mathematical equation that defines a component or that defines the chemistry if you're thinking about batteries, for example, or defines the overall structure of a system under consideration. On the other hand, you can also build models purely from data. So let's say you have a battery and you do charging discharging tests, or you have a motor and you run that motor through different speed profiles and you measure torque. So if you have that input output data for any component or system, you can build a black box model using system identification approach. And then there is some a part in the middle, which is called as gray box modeling, where you start with your first principles equation, build a structure of the model, and then overlay input output data to tune parameters of that block or that model. Eventually, your goal is to build a good model that represents the reality of the actual equipment that you will be working with. And then there are a number of products that you get within MATLAB Simulin toolchain that allow you to do this spectrum of modeling approaches. For today's presentation, to, uh, to help you start off your journey in the modeling world, uh, uh, let's to take a look at few of those products that we offer. So at the beginning, uh, my colleague Arwin talked about MATLAB and Simulink, the two main platform products that we offer. Now on top of that, we have Simscape product family. And Simscape product family allows you to do multi-domain physical system simulation. So it has vertical products, each geared for electrical, driveline, mechanical, and fluid simulation. And the beautiful part here is you can combine these different domains. For example, any complex system that you may think of, like a wind turbine okay, or electric car, that particular system has these different domains interconnected, right? So if you truly want to test a system in a virtual world, you need to have access to these domains so that you can connect different components together to realize that overall system. If you're interested in taking a look at a little bit more about what kind of components you get into these products, as an example, on the electrical side, you have access to different semiconductor components like IGBT MOSFETs, different drives like electric motors, power electronics. On, on the mechanical side, you can import from CAD tools like SOLIDWORKS or CATIA, right? So why, why I'm showing these things to you is as you begin experimenting your ideas, no matter if it is in the electrical domain or mechanical domain or a mixture of the two, you, you can be rest assured that you have these tools that you can bring to bear to start building those prototypes in an easy to use manner. And the whole idea behind this tool is to allow you to quickly build intuitive models, okay? models that reflect system structure, they're easier to understand. They're easier even if you if you're working as a part of a team, if you share it with your colleagues, they can quickly read what's going on just looking at the model at the top level and then you can collaborate on building your system going forward. So with that, let's go uh, to actual uh, Simulink and Simscape tools and build some simple examples so you get idea about the tools uh, that we are talking about today. Okay, so let me bring up my MATLAB for you. And I'm going to show you Simulink library. Okay, and let me build 
the simplest model possible using Simulink to start our discussion. Okay, so what you're seeing on the left-hand side of the screen right now, this is Simulink product library. So here, as I browse, you will see there are different mathematical blocks, different sources, different logical operations. All of these blocks allow you to build differential and algebraic equations. So any dynamic system that you are thinking about, it will be represented with a set of differential equations or algebraic equations that you can, that you can quickly build up using these blocks. So let me start off by bringing up a model canvas. So you can see this is a blank canvas right now. And what I'm gonna do is drag and drop a few blocks from the library to build a very simple model. So I'm going to get a constant block as an input source, and I'm going to get an integrator, and I will get a scope, like oscilloscope that you have in the lab. And now I will connect these components together, okay? So only three blocks that you see on the screen here. And I'm going to press the play button here and run this simulation. Okay, so uh, right now the lines are muted, but if you want to uh, start typing things in the chat, that would be wonderful. This is a simple model. What's happening? I'm giving input of a constant value, and I'm going to integrate that over a period of time. So when I do that, I should get a ramp signal as my output, right? Our basic calculus, something uh, that we study uh, in 12th standard or at the start of engineering. So you're integrating a constant over time, you're getting a ramp signal. Now let me add another integrator over here in this model and make this a second order equation. Okay, so now we are, in, uh, we are doing uh, double integration over here. I should see a parabola as the output of this simulation. Okay, so very simple start to our model building. But what this is showing you is behind the scenes, we are using ODE solvers, ordinary differential equation solvers that are using numerical integration to solve a system of equations and to give you a result. Now, in this case, it's a simple model. But as we start thinking about the electric car with so many complex systems, the vehicle dynamics, electric powertrain, all that complex system, if you were to solve by hand, uh, that will take four years, right, to get the answer. What these simulation tools allow you to do is to reimagine how you build those virtual prototypes and use power of numerical integration, those ODE solvers, to quickly solve this system of equations. Okay, so let's take one more step towards building this model. This was probably a very simple model, but I hope you got the idea. Next thing I would like to do is uh, take you through a representation of a DC motor. I'm sure you all have studied DC motor somewhere or the other. And if we look at this slide, what it is showing is two main equations that govern the operation of this DC motor. One is Kirchhoff's law that talks about the voltage drop across the loop, right? So you have applied voltage V in, you're going to have some voltage drop across inductance, some across resistance, and then the rest of it would be back EMF and that completes your voltage network equation. The second equation is the Newton's law, which relates the torque and speed of the motor. And then there is this constant K that couples these two equations. So with this information, I can model these two equations and realize a DC motor in Simulink. And it's very easy to build. You can do it in just a matter of few minutes. Okay, so if we go back to Simulink, and let me, in this case, bring up uh, bring up a blank model with the image of DC motor. So I can reference these equations on the fly, right? So now I want to build these equations one by one. Let's start with the Kirchhoff's law. What you see here is on the right-hand side, there are three voltage terms that I need to simulate. And then I need to relate that with the LDI by DT, the inductance drop. So how I can start is I can go to the sources library in Simulink. I can get a uh, signal that represents some kind of input. Okay, so in this case, I brought a step signal and I'm going to label this as V in. 
our input voltage. Now there is summation of three different terms, right? So I'm going to need a, a, need a block that is going to perform mathematical operation, which is nothing but addition and subtraction, right? So let's go and get a block here. You can see there is a subtract block. Here we have three input, so I can quickly add another input. So we can create our three terms of the voltage drop over here, right? So I got V in as the first term and the other two I want are the drop across the resistance and then my back EMF. So how do I go about doing this? Well, these three terms, if I divide that by L, our inductance, that gives me DI DT term. So what I will do is get a block, a multiplier or a division block, code that one over L term over there, and then connect that block to the output of this summation block, okay? So here I'm going to get DI by DT term. Hope you all are following me. If there is any question, please feel free to post in the chat and we'll answer it, right? So we get this DI by DT term and we just learned about the integrator block, right? So if I go and get the integrator block over here and connect that, the output of that is going to be current, okay? And then if I get another multiplier block, call it my resistance with the symbol R, I can quickly wire this to this output current signal and then feed that as my second input over here. So there you go. I got my applied voltage, I got my RI, and then the third term back EMF that will come from the second equation, Newton's law over here. So I hope you follow the process. So I don't need to build this model in entirety in the interest of time, right? And let me actually pull up a model that has been pre-built so you can see the completed model, how it would look like. Okay, so here is the DC motor model built using two equations. You got the Kirchhoff's law, you got Newton's law. And now, if I run this simulation, I can see how the speed output would look like for that applied voltage. Okay, so there you go. You can see the response. I can change the values of resistance inductance quickly, press play, and then see the response again, right? So this is how you can build any mathematical equation using building blocks in the simulator. But wouldn't it be nice if I can actually build this DC motor like it shows in the picture over here at the circuit level using resistance, inductance, and other blocks that, so that I can think at the circuit simulation level and I don't need to understand the mathematical equations in detail. So for that, you can take advantage of the Simscape product that we have. So let's go ahead and pull up another blank model and then quickly try to see how Simscape looks like, how DC motor looks like with a similar representation. So now I will scroll down in my library structure and go to Simscape and electrical elements library. Okay, so in the electrical elements library over here, you got resistance, inductance, so these different blocks, again, I can drag and drop and try to formulate my circuit over there. Okay, we also need a DC source, so I'm going to go to uh, library over here and I will get a uh, DC source that will power this circuit okay so I got my source I'm going to connect it to the resistor couple it to the inductor and then complete the electrical side of the circuit that way but we saw right there is electrical part that is powering the motor but there is mechanical side as well so there is a multi-domain model so for that I need elements that are going to do the conversion of energy from electrical to mechanical. So that's where this particular block called as translational electromechanical converter comes into play. So I will connect this electrical side, okay? And complete my electrical circuit. Okay, and then on the other hand, I will bring in mechanical components. So similar to electrical library, if I go to the mechanical library, I can bring in different elements over here, like damper, inertia, 
and start connecting them with the model over here. So I hope you, you get the idea. Now, instead of building something at the mathematical level, I'm building those things at the circuit level and I can create my DC motor over there. Okay, pardon my uh, block connections over here. Uh, it's, uh, you know, <laughs> it's evening, it's been a long day, but what essentially we're trying to do is connect these elements, uh, connect these elements to each other so that we can, so we can realize the, we can realize the model in its entirety, okay? So let me again, in the interest of time, quickly, quickly build or quickly bring up the model uh, that has been developed in Simscape environment. Okay, so here you can see the model that we were trying to build. You got the electrical circuit on the left hand side. You got the mechanical or the components on the right hand side. And you press play, and we will see the similar output to our mathematical equations. Okay, same output, right? So no matter which approach you take, you can build these system of equations. So let's go back to our slides and side by side visualize these two snapshot. A DC motor that has been built using simulating set of equations and then using Simscape circuit elements, right? And notice the differences that you see in the two. On the simulating side, these lines have arrows on them. So they represent signal flow from one block to the other. While on the Simscape side, they are wired together. So it's bi-directional flow of energy, if you will. And the, comparing the two products uh, over, over here in Simscape, you know, you can uh, give quickly different units. So resistance is Ohm, uh, inductance in Henry's. So you can, you can visualize it at the circuit level, you can parameterize it in terms of its physical values and then build your models speedily. But not just that, uh, if you know if you are if you are trying to build things like electric vehicle, electric power train, the battery management system, electric motors, hooking them together, as Prasanna will show to us uh, in the next uh, next half an hour or so, then you don't need to work at the mathematical level or even at the circuit level. As you go back to the product library over here, you will see that there are pre-built components for batteries and for motors. So if we go to Simscape electrical library over here, you can see that DC motor model already built. Okay, so this is the idea behind this vertical add-on tools that we have, that by using these advanced component libraries, you can focus your effort on the systems that you need to analyze, on your idea that you need to implement. You don't always have to start grounds up for everything. You can use this pre-built modules from the library to build your components. So here I have DC motor. If I go to some of the other libraries, you can also see uh, different sources such as, such as battery, fuel cells, super capacitor, photovoltaic array. So you can pick and place any of these components and then start simulating at the system level. Okay, so let's make that switch. Now that you have gotten a little bit idea about building basic models, let's try to think about electric vehicle, electric powertrain, and how you would go about designing that. And for that, I will invite my colleague Prasanna uh, to take you uh, through the rest of the presentation. Prasanna? Yeah. Thank you, Shripad. Uh, Arvind, can I share my screen? Yes, I'll I'll gonna make you a presenter. Sure. You are presenter now, Prasanna. Oh, okay, sure. So uh, just let me know if uh, you all can see my screen. Yes. Prasenna. Can you see the shared screen? Okay, cool. Thanks. Okay. Uh, thank you, Shripad. Um, hey, I, hey all, I, I just have one screen today. So uh, if, if anything, just unmute. And, uh, sorry. I'm not able to monitor the chat or anything at this point in time. So uh, Shripad so far uh, walked us through uh, 
how uh, MATLAB and Simulink can be uh, used for uh, building uh, fundamental components. I just wanted to take you back to one of the slides because I think I can very well use it for uh, setting up the stage. So now what we are going to do is we are going to use model based design, uh, a methodology that I plan to introduce to you. Uh, so we are going to use model based design for electric vehicle design or hybrid electric vehicle design. Uh, what we'll do is uh, we have gone through the representative list. So KPIT has shared a representative list with us. We have gone through the list and uh, there are different ideas, but all the ideas are in some sense related to the theme of electrification. And hence uh, Arvind requested uh, Shipa and me uh, to talk about uh, how uh, electrification is taken up by the industry. So the methodologies, the tools, the approaches and the experiences that we bring are from industry. And uh, that's what we plan to share with you today. Now let us go back to this slide, which is modeling approaches. So different approaches for modeling dynamic systems vary from first principles modeling to data driven modeling. Sipad has just shown you uh, two approaches from first principles modeling side, which is data. First is Simulink, which is when you understand systems physics, when you are able to derive mathematical relation between input and output, how can you represent that model mathematically? That was approach one. Secondly, uh, when you understand systems physical topology, that's how we modeled the DC motor, right? It was equivalent circuit for uh, electrical circuit. Uh, if I have to generalize it for mechanical, thermal, magnetic, I will call it a physical topology. So if you understand physical topology of a system, then also you can model the system. And there is on the other extreme data driven, which is where system identification also comes into picture, which is like if you have data out of system. Then also you can model a system. So why these things I'm bringing up again is see. EV design electric vehicle design is a complex. It's a complicated application. So you want to model different components while you model these different components. You want to use the best possible uh, or best available method for that approach while you model that thing. In the first place. Do why do you want to model it? That's what let us start with. So in this section, uh, let us try to address these questions. Uh, how to quickly build hybrid or electric vehicle models and use them for design trade off studies. Uh, some of you are asking questions in terms of sizing batteries, uh, sizing different components. So we'll address it there. Then how simulation helps in sizing components and doing what if analysis for retrofit solutions for electrification. So I plan to walk you through example of a retrofit only. Uh, what would be? I mean, let's just walk through the thought process. Let's do thought simulation in this session today. And our, we are also sharing a lot of material with you uh, so that uh, you can get started using MATLAB and Simulink. If you are new, what should you do? That is one thing uh, you will definitely need some starting point models. So we'll be sharing thousands of starting point models links to several resources on networks website and these are not marketing resources. These are all technical workflow examples. Uh, some of them are live recordings of webinars we have recently done. Uh, so th these are the things we are sharing and it's not just one way traffic. Also, there is also a teams channel Microsoft teams channel already set up with you. So later on as you go through the material, you will get into questions. Feel free to reach out to us. Arvind will be monitoring that channel and he will be uh, getting you answers to your questions. I will also uh, be talking to you a little bit about battery modeling, BMS design and things like that. Uh, let's accept one thing. Uh, we cannot cover everything uh, which everyone needs. However, we are definitely planning to cover the main methodology that will that has helped several companies and that will help you also to do these kind of simulations. So uh, first thing is now electrification is mainstream. Receptive vehicles have gained market acceptance. Uh, we know uh, uh, a lot of bad effects that are happening because of global warming and how everyone is getting sensitized and taking actions towards global warming. I'm sure you must be uh, uh, you must be reading some news about the recently held COP29 conference and how different countries are coming together to do different things like India also did something E Amrit initiative in uh, association with UK and things like that are happening. We are also seeing that uh, technology is progressing. Uh, Prices of lithium are also reducing that will also further uh, uh, result in reduction of uh, electric vehicles and also consumer demand. So now consumers are also uh, like in India, uh, we definitely know consumers are OK for electric vehicles as well as petrol diesel vehicles, uh, specifically looking at the uh, facts. So in my section, I will be mainly focusing on vehicles. Then Shikpat will come back again and then he will talk about rest of the infrastructure. 
we definitely understand that only having hybrid or electric vehicles is not going to solve the challenge and a lot of you have already thought about it a lot of you are already talking about renewable energy sources chargers charging infrastructures um, connectivity with grid and things like that so shripath will come back again to cover those things so in this case while uh, the motivation towards electrification worldwide remains the same every country has taken a different approach for electrification what i mean by that is few countries are uh, slowly going towards hybrid so they are uh, starting with plug in hybrids some countries have directly gone for pure electrification india is one of them and nowadays few countries have also started giving more attention to hydrogens more attention to fuel cells again i don't know if we should call india in that right now or not so early so ev leaders have relied on model based design for electrification i do have six graphics six user stories on this slide these all are uh, ev leaders uh, in market and mathworks has worked with all of them uh, i'm here uh, sharing our experiences of working with these companies if you look at the first graphic it is tesla everyone knows tesla uh, tesla is not new trust me tesla is not new uh, 10 years uh, ago like 2008 more than 10 years ago tesla used model based design for building their first sports vehicle which is roadster and uh, we will share these slides with you uh, go through it if you are interested to know more so 10 years ago they used model based design uh, since then they have been using model based design matlab simulating for uh, doing building different simulations and recently they published another article uh, where uh, they have revealed their secret of how they keep on beating everyone in the range game range of electric vehicle game i will quickly share you the, uh, one of the excerpt from uh, uh, what tesla engineers said Uh, their batteries are done they have done a lot of r&d with their battery now their batteries are commodities for their motor control design they use simulations and they improved their motor efficiency by 6 to 8% improving that motor efficiency by 6 to 8% resulted in overall vehicle efficiency improvement of 15 to 18% so right now tesla is working on their on uh, improve by improving their motor control design so that's where they are and right now in india most of us are working towards battery technology so probably what holds in our future is probably motor and motor control and you must have seen things like uh, magnetless motors can we reduce reliance on uh, countries who have a lot of magnet and can we do switch reluctance motors and things like that that is happening that's about tesla secondly ether energy we have seen ether energy uh, converting from a startup Uh, to a productionized company so i work out of pune office of mathworks and today if i want to buy a ether 450 it takes me 10 days to get it in my hands so that's ether success and we have seen how they use model based design for uh, not just designing their uh, vehicle controls but also for their charger controls then the third is a chinese company called as saic motors uh, they uh, have uh, gone through a very interesting journey of, of mindset change from prototyping to production i believe a lot of indian companies who are right now getting into electrification or who have got into electrification are onto this journey today uh, they used to rely a lot on suppliers and now how they work with uh, uh, doing things in house and your suppliers and things like that then electrification uh, gives rise to a lot of software and then when you have a lot of software onto your vehicle your quality uh benchmarks change a lot there are a lot of safety certifications that come into picture you guys i don't know if you are already exposed to iso 26264 or otosar but in future you will get exposed to them because some of them will get mandatory for some of the safety critical systems so that's what lg chem did and lg chem is a tier 1 supplier they are suppliers to uh, volvo volvo's xc90 and that's the next story volvo xc90 actually did what you guys are doing they actually built a virtual prototype of their complete vehicle of their complete system i know you are not working on vehicle but whichever system you are working i think you will be building virtual prototype this time so that's where uh, volvo actually did a lot of uh, good work in terms of using simlink using sim using simlink as a simulation platform using simscape which shripa just showed you uh, for building different component models integrating them back together and managing the whole complexity of a virtual vehicle model and also data you cannot neglect in today's world uh, specifically as far as electrification is concerned neo car company uh, they actually made use of data for battery state of health estimation well they were doing battery design for the first time they did not have any data what they did was they built simulation models 
they used synthetic data. So simulation data was used for doing data driven modeling. It was deployed onto a cloud and when their vehicles came into picture, then now they're refining their models for doing model based design. Anyway, so some interesting stories, uh, some of them related to vehicles, uh, but I just thought of sharing it with you. Now let us go to challenges for powertrain electrification. Our case study is retrofit. What do I mean by retrofit? Okay, I'm not going to take you all the way down for retrofit, but just for the uh, thought process, how would you think about retrofit? Uh, let's say we have a uh, Maruti Swift today. Uh, Maruti Swift has a 1.2 liter engine and we want to retrofit it. Uh, uh, why do we want to retrofit it? it is for improving the fuel economy by 25% and uh, by, for reducing the emissions uh, that come out of engine. Uh, to meet uh, some uh, hypothetical BS7 uh, emission norms. Uh, this is all hypothetical I'm bringing. There is nothing BS7 as of now. So how do we go about it? First thing we do is we basically benchmark our existing Maruti Swift to determine the requirements for electrification. So I will build model of my electric vehicle. Uh, sorry, I will build model of my conventional vehicle. I will run it for different use cases and I will understand what is the fuel economy and how it performs. Because after retrofit, I definitely don't want my performance to degrade. As a part of retrofit, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the engine size. Right now, the engine size is 1.2 liter. I want to put a 0.8 liter, a 800 cc engine in place of that. If I just replace the engine, what is going to happen? It will reduce the performance. It may improve the fuel economy, but it will reduce the performance. So for that reduction in performance, I want to add an electric motor and battery to take care of the gap in performance that arises. So that's how I want to hybridize. I want to convert my conventional Maruti Swift into HEV, into a hybrid electric vehicle uh, Maruti Swift. If that is my requirement, how would I go about it? First step, benchmark. Second step, component selection. What do I mean by component selection? Now I have to select my downsized engine. Maybe Maruti Alto always had that. So let's say we have that engine available. We fit that engine. What are the other components? Motors, batteries, which motor to be used, which battery to be used by which what I mean is should I use a PMSM or induction machine or Swiss electrons motor and uh, what should be the geometry of it? Similarly, in case of battery, what which type of battery lithium ion is fine, but which what should be the third compound in lithium ion? What should be my battery cell? It should be a prismatic cell or a pouch cell or what it is. Do I need active cooling for my battery pack and my motor? A lot of questions coming to picture. Then it goes to third challenge, which is component sizing. Sizing, there are two things. One is mechanical sizing. Other is functional sizing or uh, what I mean by functional sizing is for meeting my requirement of bridging the performance gap, which comes because of uh, engine, reduce, uh, engine uh, reduction size. For meeting that gap, what should be the output of my motor? What should be the rating of my motor? And during my, let's say, CT drive cycle, how many times the motor will be used? For driving that motor, what should be the size of my battery? What should be the output of my battery? What should be the rating of my battery? So that's what I mean by component sizing here. And the last challenge is everything put together, how does the vehicle perform? Do these components work as a vehicle at all? And if they work as a vehicle, then uh, what is the best fuel economy that I can get? What is the best range that I can get by using these components? Can I take this car to ARAI for homologation, for certification? And can I start selling this as a production vehicle uh, in future? These are some of the challenges that come along with powertrain electrification. So uh, how does the solution looks like? The solution looks clumsy. There are a lot of options available even today. One thing I'm saying that I want to reduce my engine size, but do I really want to do that or can I directly do an electric vehicle? That's one option. Second, if I want to do hybrid electric vehicle, there is P0, P1, P2, P3, P4. These are all architecture, vehicle architectures. My slide can perhaps uh, show you some of them. Input power split HEVs, by the way, Toyota hybrid. If you know Toyota has a lot of hybrid architectures, input power split is Toyota, THS, Toyota hybrid system. Then there are multiple different combinations of P1, P2, P3, P4. So there are a multiple options available. Some of them are already existing into vehicles and some of them could be new to the vehicles. So how to address these challenges? Now see, we understood challenges. We have seen, briefly seen the solution space. It's a complicated solution space. So one way is basically I will do system design calculations. I will understand exactly what I want to do. I'll do some calculations, maybe using Excel. Then I will build prototypes and test them thoroughly. Are you with me? 
first thing i will i will do system design calculations i'll design my system and then i'll build prototypes and i will test them thoroughly there are two ways of doing this one is physical prototypes that's what used to happen traditionally you build physical prototype you test it second way virtual prototype that's where you build you use model based design or you used simulation driven driven approach for building prototypes now these are not mutually exclusive you have to build physical prototypes but should you at all build virtual prototypes before building physical prototypes is the question i think the answer is obvious but i still want to get into one level details of it detail of it because i want you to really understand what i mean if you do physical prototypes the scenario is going to look something like this you will build uh, maybe 10 prototypes 10 physical prototypes because you have p0 p1 p2 p3 then p1 p3 then p2 then p4 a lot of different combinations a lot of different sizes a lot of things will come into picture you will test that vehicle for thousands of kilometers you will take it to ladakh you will take it to rajasthan you will take it to pondicherry because you have to test it for different altitudes different temperatures uh, different uh, scenarios like this so it's clumsy it takes a lot of time and by doing all this testing you still are not sure if it is going to work for that particular scenario which you don't know so that is a sort of disadvantage of physical prototype and another thing is if you build physical prototype and if something goes wrong what do you do stop everything rebuild the physical prototype recorrect it redo the, all the testing so that's what it is about now if you go to second consideration which is virtual prototype if you are building virtual prototype how does the scenario look like you have to build simulation models of all these different vehicles p0 p1 p2 p3 p4 whatever combination like 10 models instead of building 10 models physically you will build 10 models virtually you will build 10 simulation models you will subject them to probably no similar test cases so that you can do some fair comparison between them for doing that what you need you need to build different motor models you need to build different battery models what i mean is see for doing component selection you need to have access to induction motor as well as pmsm as well as a different type of pmsm as well as switch, switch reluctance motor you also need access to different battery technology models and things like that how do you build it shripath has already shown us using simulink using simscape but then isn't it time consuming it may take some time isn't it so is there any idea let's look into it however you don't just need to build component models you also need a vehicle level model because you need to put your component somewhere right if you are trying to replace a physical prototype by a virtual prototype then your virtual prototype should be exactly same or as similar as possible to your virtual pro uh, to your physical prototype that's where you need a car model or a vehicle model which has some drive cycle which has driver which is capable of uh, simulating different environmental conditions like ladakh and rajasthan and pondicherry which is able to give you access to different controllers where you can fit in your different components and run simulations and things like that so you will realize that so this is basically model based design what is model based design at a very high level instead of building first physical prototype you will build first prototype as virtual prototype we will get into details of this uh, uh, one level details of this already but at a high level this is it so now let us quickly understand traditionally if we did things this is how we do things now this is for those who are not working on vehicles see vehicles is just an example here what is traditional design process it has five steps requirements design implementation integration and test you divide your business requirements into technical requirements different technical requirements are converted into requirements of different components of the system different components are designed maybe by using different simulation softwares for example for mechanical system design you use cad for electrical design you use circuit simulation softwares and things like that then by implementation in a traditional design process you actually mean build a physical prototype a mechanical person will go to mechanical workshop and build a component electrical person will build a printed circuit board a pcb a control software person will build write his software deploy it onto a chip semiconductor chip and put it onto the pcb and things like that so that's where you are getting into integration and you are able to test the system as a whole once only when you have all your components physical prototypes ready so basically a traditional design process heavily relies on physical prototypes also you will realize that simulation cannot be used to optimize system performance at design phase see what if 
my motor size uh, what if i am comparing a 85 newton meter motor with a 90 newton meter motor for my battery it is going to matter a lot but for my vehicle performance how how much does it matter how do i get answer to this question in a physical in a traditional design process i have to build two physical prototypes but if i have a model i can quickly change size and i can quickly test it that is the advantage so model based design process everything remains the same requirements design implementation integration test this will remain the same what will change is you can simulate different components of your system into single simulation model that is what we call as virtual prototype you can design the mechanical and electrical and magnetic and thermal and control component as a single as different components of one model you can connect them to each other that means you can simulate and test your system as a whole in design phase itself and that is the main advantage of model based design and this is the main reason why all these successful companies have used model based design for last so many years i'll tell you one disadvantage you end up spending a lot of time in this phase but that's when you can also reuse all your simulation models you can generate code from your models you can employ advanced real time testing technologies like rapid control prototyping hardware in the loop simulation and then you can save a lot of time so building virtual prototype before physical prototype in other words building system level simulation model always helps it's basically adding one step into your system design place into your system design process but it helps you a lot in designing your system in a very methodical manner it helps you to do a lot of what if analysis and uh, how how should i go about it if i am working on what a component of a system then also it helps you a lot because it helps you to use a vehicle model if you are working on designing a battery uh, some innovative battery you can quickly replace this vehicle models battery by your battery and test it for what if scenarios so there are a lot of advantages well in the interest of time now let's apply model based design to our retrofit development example again i am not really planning to make this technical again trying to walk you through a thought simulation so if we have to build a hybrid electric vehicle model uh, we probably need access to different components uh, of the vehicle uh, where we know the anatomy of the vehicle or physical topology of the vehicle by using different components we build the complete vehicle level model and then we test it and once we test it we can actually understand if it is meeting the drive cycle how the engine is behaving how the motor is behaving how the battery is behaving what is my fuel economy improvement i am getting lot of these questions i can get this is efficiency by the way lot of these questions i can get answers to lot of these questions i can get by building a system level simulation model all good all nice but then you will have a question like sir i only have five months or six months or only two months or only three months i cannot build a complete model from scratch or i am a student end of the day i may not have all the information to be able to build a vehicle level model from scratch even though i understand simulink and simscape will help me each, build each and every component from scratch for me building it is realistically not possible so building xcv model ev model from scratch is time consuming and that is where we need a starting point model and not just any starting point model our starting point model needs to separately represent the plant and controller models okay what i mean by plant is basically vehicle system uh, in case of motor control motor is plant controller is motor controller battery is plant bms is battery management system engine is plant engine management system is controller that's what i mean i need a model which is open for customization and is well documented again why is this important because whatever model starting point model is available it's not necessary that it is my model that is where i should be able to quickly customize it and i also need that model to simulate fast see we are talking about a vehicle level model now testing a vehicle for a one hour long uh, drive cycle how much time it takes one hour because it's a one hour long drive cycle testing the same vehicle model for a one hour long simulated drive cycle should take much lesser right so that's what we are talking here so that's what it is about so this is where we do have a set of models already developed for you as a starting point models called as power and oxid whoever participates in sparkle gets access to all these tools hence we are talking about these tools so uh, if you don't know how to access your matlab which is meant for your complementary use for kpit sparkle get in touch with arvind he has already shared it in chat once he will again share it at the end of the presentation he is also going to uh, tell you how to access it so you do have access to this power and docs it what is power and docs it 
one thing it has a set of pre-built reference applications which is a conventional vehicle then hybrid electric vehicle then uh, diff electric vehicle it also has engine virtual engine dynamometer models I'm, I, I'm sure a couple of teams are working on something related to engines technology. So you can also make use of virtual dynamometers. And it also has library of blocks wherein you can build your own models. You can customize these models. So all these things are available for you to use as a starting point. What is your prerequisite? You need to understand fundamentals of MATLAB and Simulink. Everything in Pot and Blockset is built only using Simulink. So each and every component is built using fundamental equations. You can see all those equations. You can understand all those equations. Everything is well documented. So you have a very good meal already prepared for you. You just need to customize it for your requirement and then use it for your requirement. Prerequisites, MATLAB and Simulink. If you don't know that, there are two courses on the website called as MATLAB on ramp and Simulink on ramp. Understand MATLAB on ramp, understand Simulink on ramp, uh, go through the MathWorks website. I think getting started, you, uh, you know, using MATLAB and Simulink uh, without learning, uh, it's not so difficult. I mean, all of us started doing it that way only. So it's not a, uh, well, it is used for rocket science, but uh, it's not so uh, difficult to get started with. Anyway, in the interest of time again. So it's not just power and block set, but there are a lot other models also available. There are different vehicle template models available. There is electric ship model. There are different battery models. By the way, I am also getting into details of battery a little bit, but a lot of different models are available on file exchange. Again, if you need access to these, let us know. We'll be happy to help you. There is HEV model available, which is a very specific HEV model. There are battery electric vehicle models available. So a lot of things are readily available. Why am I sharing these with you? Because I want to give you some starting points. You cannot build. You don't have time and it is not smart also to build things from scratch. Hence, use some starting point. Understand it, customize it and then move on. And these models, by the way, these are realistic models. These models simulate, these models run. So you download, you, play, you push the run button. You can anyway start doing some kind of simulations. Uh, let us quickly talk about why to build system level simulation models. So vehicle system level models can be used for two main purposes. One is design optimization and second is design and verification of your VCU, your vehicle control unit, a vehicle level controller. What I mean by design optimization? See, there are different things like how do I ensure that my electric vehicle gives me maximum range while it's uh, 0 to 60 kmph time taken is X seconds. This is always a design trade off. When you have this kind of model, before you build any physical prototype, you can do this kind of analysis. You can test it by replacing motors. Put a 85 Newton meter motor and see what is the range. Put a 90 Newton meter and see what is the range. Or even better, you can define an optimization problem and ask the model to tell you the answer of I need my uh, electric vehicle to give me 230 kilometer in, uh, in, in a full range. What should be the size of my motor for this range? And you can actually set up that kind of design optimization problem and then it will solve it for you. You can also verify your controller performance for different SOC points of battery. So you can verify your vehicle level models performance for different component sizes or different properties of component, different use cases of component. You can also use these models for component sizing. So once you build vehicle level model, it helps us to better understand the requirements for various components during development. So two main aspects of uh, any uh, electric or hybrid uh, vehicle models are battery and motor. Now you may be working on directly vehicle or you may be working on battery or you may be working on motor. Model based design is the same thing. What this graphic or what this slide shows you is end of the day, we are talking about a plant and a controller connected to each other. In some case, the plant is motor and controller is BMS. In the other case, the plant is motor. Uh, sorry. In some case, the plant is battery and controller is BMS. In other case, the plant is motor and controller is motor control unit MCU. So model based design fundamentals, all the starting point models all remain the same. If you are doing this for a PV sale, it remains the same. If you are doing this for any kind of application, it remains the same. What may change is the tools required for building detailed models may change. If my system is vehicle, I do have a readily available model. If my system is battery, I may need to build a detailed battery model, like a battery cell, its thermal properties, then what happens when I stack different cells next to each other and build a battery module, how it performs electrically, how it performs thermally, 
let's get into that let's quickly understand that modeling battery as a system for developing battery management system so uh, in the interest of time i am going to go a little fast any questions feel free to reach out later and i'll be able to share okay i do have something good to share to you where you can understand the detailed workflows see there are five main steps as far as the uh, battery bms design is concerned step number one is battery cell modeling what is the challenge here it's a electrochemical uh, component who is thermally dependent once you build a battery cell then you can scale up you need to scale up the cell model to build a battery pack model so cell to module to battery pack why there are different colors i think you understand different cells are at different charges different cells are at different temperatures then you need to put the cell supervisory circuits at different points in your battery pack so that you are able to measure the voltages currents and temperatures at different points you are able to do cell balancing and you can also able to you are also able to manage the precharge circuits once you have that then you are actually in a position to design different bms functions different battery management system functions like soc estimation or maybe fault handling and things like that once you design and test that in a closed loop manner, manner then you will generate code and then you can deploy it onto a controller no one does c coding in the automotive electrification industry anymore uh, c hand coding is a thing of the past because there is huge amount of software you need to and you need it safety critical so it has to be machine generated and it has to be machine verified as well so that's what it is all about uh, just one main thing how to address the main challenge which is modeling electrothermal interactions of battery cell that is where simscape comes into picture Shripath showed you how to model the simscape by using electrical components right these are electrical and thermal components of a battery cell this is thermoelectric model of a battery cell and uh, where this model is a function of state of charge temperature and age of the battery uh, we can always model it uh, and we can always get into details of it this is built using tool simscape by the way this model is also available as a shipping demo in simscape once you download matlab you will get access to 1rc or 2rc equivalent circuit based battery model in addition to that uh, there is also a detailed battery model which is having a 16p 6l 6s configuration so 96 cells uh, and a bms a detailed bms so that can also be downloaded from a website and you can use that as a starting point if you are doing anything related to battery pack if you are doing anything related to battery cell then simscape might be a um, a better multi domain approach for doing it and of course if you want to learn more about battery management systems mathworks website does have several uh, video links uh, you can again uh, we'll share slides and you can get access to these things just view it we, do, we are not collecting any information so we are not even bothered to ask you hey give me your name give me your email id nothing like that just access it use it similarly for motor in the interest of time and there was a little lesser interest on motor not getting into that but there is a lot of material available on Maxwell website for motors also. In the month of September, we conducted a five part webinar series for end to end electric vehicle modeling simulation, architecture to deployment and links to all these videos are also available. So uh, you click on this, you will be redirected to all the videos and you will be able to access all the videos also. This is where we are talking about system level analysis, sizing and all that then battery then motor then software and then real time testing these are the five webinars we have uh, we have gone through so uh, i need to hand it over to shripad because what we have spoken so far a quick summary is we have spoken how do you build a hybrid or an electric vehicle model we started with the example of retrofit if i want to do retrofit i want to remove something and i want to put something else that's what is retrofit but then maybe my condition is going to be like vehicle performance needs to be intact after retrofitting for doing that one thing benchmark second thing use model based design do architectural study build different system level simulation models experiment so that you understand your final vehicle component why final vehicle design once you understand vehicle design then you make use of that design for different component design that is what is model based design for electric vehicle development now we have spoken so much about battery now let us get into charging batteries and I will request Shripat to share his screen. Hey, thank you. Thank you, Prasanna. That was uh, very interesting to see the details of modeling the entire powertrain for the electric vehicle. And as he rightly said, right, once we have the electric powertrain, we need to have means to charge uh, that battery that is sort of the heart 
of our powertrain. So let's go to that part as a next step. So just kind of to help all of us be on the same page, right? When we start thinking about charging an electric vehicle, you have you have electric vehicle supply equipment or EVAC that you see in the diagram, right? It can be it can be directly coming from your power socket in your garage, your residential complex, or it can be a public EV charging station from where you you will be getting that supply. Now, uh, EV charging, simply put, right? It's the process of transferring energy from that external source to the vehicle battery. But how does that happen? Inside the vehicle, there is an onboard charger. It's also referred to as EV charging system. And that EV charging system is actually taking, uh, taking the energy from the supply equipment and then regulating it so that it will be conditioned to charge your battery. Now, there are many different subsystems into that EV charging system. One of them is communication. Right, there needs to happen communication between the supply equipment and the battery management system. When you hook up the vehicle, hey, what is the current state of charge for my battery? Where do I want to take it to? How much time do I have to charge this battery? And then secondly, as you bring the plug and insert it into the vehicle, there are other circuitry like proximity sensor, which is making sure that the uh, uh, that the locking has happened correctly. So there are those different kinds of system, but the true uh, core component of that is the power electronic system. And then there are different types of systems. So let's go uh, through them quickly one by one. So first one is AC charging mode. Okay, so these are the systems that deliver energy right from the socket or the electric utility connection where you have uh, directly to that onboard charger and the onboard charger is converting that AC power into DC power to then feed to the battery, right? Battery is our DC source. So we need to convert that from AC to DC. Now, uh, AC charging, there are a couple of different uh, options, low chargers, fast chargers, but the one from the fast charging mode that has really become popular, like the Tesla, charger that you might have seen in advertisements or in other places, it's it's a fast DC charger. And what it does is it directly provides energy as a DC power, and then it bypasses the onboard charger on your vehicle, and then powers the battery or supplies power to the battery through this high voltage contactor in between. So that's your DC charging mode. And then there are some innovating innovative techniques that are coming up to do wireless charging where you are using induction principle to transfer energy from the power source to the charging system on the vehicle, which will then convert it to DC and feed to the battery. Now, this concept is pretty interesting. And in Australia, we, we have a, we have a uh, customer called Human Freedom, which has actually developed this wireless charger with the help of MATLAB and Simulink. And they are testing putting these supply equipment in inside the road so that as the vehicle passes the road or as you are, when you have parked it in the garage or specific dedicated parking spots, it will get charged wirelessly through this induction principle. So uh, I have seen some of the topics in the competition, they are about EV, EV charging mode. So this is an area where there is a lot of the research going on right now. Even the existing charges, it's about how can you make make them operate in a, in a fast pace? How can you deliver this energy faster in an optimized manner? How can you communicate effectively? Like think about uh, think about ten vehicles coming to a charging station, kind of the uh, new version of petrol pumps, if you will, and then all of them want to get charged as fast as possible. Uh, but uh, you you potentially can have different payment rates, right? Uh, you can have smart charging where you're charging different vehicles with their batteries at different le different state of charge level. So there are a lot of ideas uh, that uh, that are that that need to be tested, that need to be evolved. So if any of you has topics in the competition in this space, 
uh, definitely take a look at some of the user stories that we have in the space, uh, and then you can use MATLAB and Simulink in that process. Now, as an example, uh, I would like to share this demo. This is a DC fast charger demo example that we have available in, in our Simscape electrical product. So when you install the trial, uh, you can get access to this. And what I would like you to uh, see in this model is the different subsystems that make up the charger. So on the left-hand side, you have the grid or connection with your power socket. Then you have some components in between that are your that are components of your charging systems. Like there is front-end converter, which is converting that AC power from the grid to DC power. And then there is DC to DC converter that is regulating that so as to feed your battery at its state of charge and then power it from there. Okay, so in these fast DC chargers, uh, the core component that you need to think about is the power electronics and its control design. So like Prasanna talked about the electric powertrain and when you're designing, you need to think about sizing of that equipment then do its thermal analysis or power analysis. Those kinds of same steps in the workflow are applicable over here as well. Okay, so any of you, if you have any project in terms of power electronics or power systems, and you need to perform these different tasks, I, 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 I want you to take away that you have tools and capabilities residing in the product Simscape Electrical, which will help you do these tasks quite easily. Okay, and let me give you a few quick examples of those so that you can actually see uh, that in action. Okay, so let's go back to uh, MATLAB and Simulink and let me bring up an example of a buck converter. Okay, uh, it's, it's a very common topology that gets used inside the charger or any kind of power conversion technique that you use. The other ones that are popular are boost converter, uh, double, e, double, double bridge configuration, full bridge, half bridge, etc. right? So you have these topologies available to you pre-built, or you can, if you, are, if you are trying to tweak and make something innovative, you also have the building blocks that you can bring together to realize that circuit. So in this particular uh, converter, what's happening is we have the input power source at 30 volt, and we want to step down that voltage to power the battery by what amount you want to step down, that can be controlled by giving the reference input over here, which is 15 in this case, and then adjusting the duty cycle or the switching on and off of these MOSFETs, which are the power electronics component part of these topology. So you can, you can arrange this component to reflect a particular topology like per boost, parameterize these components. So when you double click on any of these components, you have access to dialog parameter that that will allow you to set is uh, on resistance, drain current, capacitance, temperature, all of those profiles, right? So depending upon the level of fidelity that you desire or the analysis that you want to do in case of uh, thermal analysis or loss calculation, you can utilize these components and then simulate this circuit to observe the behavior. So in this case, my buck converter is stepping down the input voltage of 30 volts down to the reference 15 volt and i have a controller that is regulating that change over so that it would be a smooth change as the system is operationalized under different load conditions under different temperature conditions and you can observe the responses as this simulation is running if you want to observe responses in terms of uh, what is the output voltage, what is the supply current, those detailed waveforms uh, can be seen at any part in your circuit, okay? So this is one of the things that I wanted to highlight. Now you can extend this logic to build those di different topologies or to build even more complicated circuits. You also have access to tools that will allow you to perform harmonic analysis or control design on these power electronic circuits, which are two of the very important uh, things that are, that are used with any power electronics design. And what you will find in products is you have many different examples built in 
that allow you to test and compare these topologies uh, to go ahead with your design process in a faster way. So this another example that I'm bringing in here, it is now using blocks to simulate six pulse diode rectifier or 12 pulse diode rectifier. And for those of you who may not be familiar, these are kind of the topologies that are very popular to reduce the harmonics in your power electronic circuit. Because think about it, finally these chargers are going to get connected with the utility grid, right? As you are drawing power and converting that power, the more harmonics that you have in your power electronic circuit, the more harmonics you are going to insert into our utility grid, which will, which will not be beneficial uh, for the operation of the grid in terms of losses or complexity at other loads that the utility grid is serving. So there, when you commercialize technology, there are always regulations that your total harmonic distortion cannot be more than 5% as an example. And these simulations allow you to test that. First of all, you can, comp you can look at the waveforms and actually see, is this modeling six pulse configuration for us? Okay, so when I look at this waveform over here, when you see these three phases, you can actually count the pulses, two for each phase, that makes it a six pulse configuration. So I can, I can apply my understanding of power electronic circuit operation that we all learn in theoretical courses and actually see that in a simulation result. And then I can utilize tools that are, that are available at your fingertips, like this FFT analysis, to do harmonic analysis of any of the waveform that is out here, okay? So let me pull up that harmonic analysis capability. So that I can see that in action. Yeah, I have a multi screen setup here, so please pardon till I bring this over. And in, in the middle, I just want to do quick time check. I know we are at 8 o'clock right now. So, uh, quick time check with Vishal. Uh, is it okay if we go 10 minutes over, or you would like us to start wrapping sure. things up? No, no. I think I think uh, we can we can proceed. Okay, perfect. All right. So uh, right now, this harmonic analysis utility, I have it open on my second screen. But just to keep the momentum of our presentation, what I will do is, uh, along with this harmonic analysis, I will show you the next step of designing controls on any of your power electronic circuit. So let me uh, let me go and take a pick another example. Uh, for those of you who may not necessarily be working on charging systems, but I've seen some topics where you're working on photovoltaic systems or grid connected systems. So in those cases, instead of working on a diode rectifier, you might be working on an inverter, which is converting your DC power into AC power. So let me show an example of that. So you can, uh, you can relate and work on such examples as well. So here, so we are going the other way. We have a DC source, we have an inverter. So we are converting that DC power into AC power to feed into the grid. Okay, and this is also important for any grid connected system, whether it's solar, wind, fuel cells, whenever you want to connect that system with the grid, you need this type of inverter in the middle to make that connection happen. Okay, so right now you're seeing, uh, seeing the three phase response. And if I zoom in onto this response, you actually see some switching happening, right? So this is power electronic devices. That's why it's not giving you smooth sinusoidal waveforms over there, which actually generates harmonics in your circuit. But when you go to do control design on this circuit, pretty quickly, you can actually switch the topology from these power electronic devices to what we call average value model devices and go about performing your control design tasks, okay? So with that, I can rerun my model. So I have I have reduced the fidelity of my model. So going back to one of the concepts that we touched in the beginning, that you need to adjust your model fidelity depending on the task that you want to perform. If you want to do harmonic analysis, you need that full switching power electronic model. But if you need a control design, then it's okay to just have a average value model of your circuitry 
which can still give you the same response, but it may not give you the details that you need. So in, in this case, you can see uh, the switching is not as much pronounced as it was in the previous circuitry, which we still, still see the same simulation response at a high level. And now if I want to tune a PID controller for, for one, of, one of the controllers that are in this circuit, we actually offer some nice control design tuning capabilities. Okay, so when you open this PID block, you have this tune option that will let you tune your controller. Okay, uh, uh, I'm sure most of you have taken a controls class somewhere in your engineering studies, and you have learned concepts like Bode plot, root locus. You might have even drawn Bode plots by hand to compute gain margin or phase margins of the system. What these tools allow you is a way to do that in an interactive fashion uh, and take the complexity of the process away away from your uh, from your tasks. Okay, so this is a user interface that just opened up. This will allow me to linearize my system and tune controller around it. Okay, so I'm going to choose an option from the drop down over here to linearize this system, and I'm going to give it a op uh, operating point. Okay, which is somewhere in the simulation that I'm running. All right, so let me give a op operating point over here and then press play to linearize the system. So what is happening behind the scene? Uh, uh, the system is looking at your closed loop setup and it is, uh, it is performing the linearization operation to, to design a, a controller for you. Okay, so let's see. We should be getting that output pretty soon. In the meanwhile, uh, since we are coming to the close of this presentation, if there are any questions that you want to ask that we can quickly answer, please feel free to type them in the chat uh, so that uh, we can address them along the way or right at the closing. So what you're seeing over here is as I linearize this model, I'm seeing the old response for my default PI gains of the controller and a new response that was tuned automatically for me. And you can also see the control parameters now for, for this response that has been tuned. And I can, with the help of a slider, adjust this control response to meet my controller specifications. Okay, so as I'm moving this slider, you can see my response becoming faster and faster. It is actually going uh, to the close to instability. So visually, by looking at the response, looking at these parameters, I can tune it to achieve a certain set of controller specifications, which will be pretty common when you're designing controller for any type of system. And then I can update this block so that these newly tuned values will be, will be updated in the block and you can control with your design workflow. So essentially what we saw with a quick example is when you are building new systems. You now Prasanna talked about plant model and its controller design. In this particular case, the plant model is your battery and inverter. And then we are designing a controller to regulate the output of that inverter. And then the beauty of this tool chain is once you design this controller, if you wanted to generate C code for this, so that you can automatically deploy it on an embedded chip, you can right click and go to these options for C, C++ code generation. Obviously there are a few more steps that, that you will need to do to make sure that the generated code is targeted for a specific processor like TSC 2000, et cetera. But I'm showing you kind of an workflow. How do you go from a desktop simulation to production ready code? How do you do plant model? How do you control design and then deploy that on a processor of your choice? So okay, today's presentation, this is, this is sort of a beginning of your journey in many cases. What we would like you to take away are these steps where you can perform different phases of the model-based design from desktop simulation to rapid controls prototyping or hardware in the loop simulation and then finally generating production ready code. So no matter what systems you are working on, you might be working on uh, photovoltaic solar power systems. Uh, you have examples available 
within the product that will show you set up a complete end-to-end -end setup and then allow you to go through these steps from desktop simulation uh, down to hardware in the loop and production code generation, right? So I would like you to keep that in mind. And just for the sake of completion, since we are running out of time, I'm moving through this quickly. But the final thing that we wanted to tackle today was so far we have seen design of that system more at the component level or, or performing powertrain simulation or charger simulation. But let's bring it back to the high, high level. Tomorrow, there are going to be hundreds of electric vehicles running in our locality, right? Uh, by when I say tomorrow, uh, in, in near future. But as engineers and uh, uh, student competition uh, participants like you, you will be making sure these technologies come to fruition at a faster pace. So when you have to test, when you have this electric vehicle ready, when you have this charging infrastructure ready, is my grid going to be in a position to take this additional load and be able to supply that demand? And you know, there are going to be many different profiles that will be at play. Profiles of people who will charge their vehicles at night, those who will charge at work, those who will charge Monday morning, just as they are getting ready to go for go, go to the office in a public charging station, they will be charging it. So all these different profiles, these are going to add to the peak load demand on our grid. You know, as it is, we know many a times there is power failures on Thursdays. There is not enough power to supply our existing load. So will it take? Will the grid take this additional load? Will there need? Uh, will there be needed to have energy storage, big energy storage on the grid? or renewable sources which will take uh, which will supply that additional load during peak hours so all those kinds of what if scenarios if you want to do you need to perform grid level simulations and those kinds of examples are also available for you in the product so i'm just going to show you uh, these examples you can you know when you get access to the products feel free to open these examples and play with it so you can run these different scenarios so you can size your vehicles you can uh, you can you can test out different charging profiles you can test out different weather patterns to see how much power would be generated from pv wind these kinds of renewable resources and perform this grid simulation there is a vast variety of examples just in the renewables domain that you will find in simscape electrical so what i would want to leave you with is no matter what application you are tackling in the electrification domain you will find an example in the product that is relevant that is closely related to what you're doing study that as a reference example and then start from there tweak some parameters get get that confidence get comfortable with using those tools and then start prototyping your own ideas and like we have posted links in the chat you have access to those on ramp courses and my colleague Arvind will share some more resources that you can get ready access to to start your journey building virtual prototypes. So with that, I will pass the ball uh, back to Arvind so he can uh, take us to the closing of this session. I'll just share my screen again. So let me know when you can see my screen. Is it visible? Yes. Yes. So, so, so everyone's we spoke about. Uh, I, I think I've seen many questions that uh, everybody is asking that uh, how you can download MATLAB. So you can uh, follow this link which I've already posted in the chat. You can click on this link and this will take you to a uh, website uh, give me a moment something like this you will reach here where you'll get an option like uh, to download your software so once you do this it will take you uh, to a section where it will ask you for what operating system you want to download MATLAB and Simlink so just click on download for window this will download an executable file and once you click on that it will start uh, start the installation of MATLAB after asking you what toolbox you want to install. So for example, if you want to use Simscape or Powertrain block set and the other toolboxes which was featured in this session, you can select those uh, 
once uh, in 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 that uh, installation uh, uh, pop up that comes out and then after installing we'll get all the product so one note i would uh, like to make is that this is uh, it, this is a complete available software there is no restriction on what 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 you want to use or not everything is available to you this is one thing and second thing i also seen lots of the question which is revolving around a specific project statement that you have in mind and the question that how you can uh, do this using MATLAB and Simulink. So I will encourage you all uh, to get connected to us. Uh, and we, we, are, we are happy to do one-on-one -on -one, uh, meeting with you to understand what exactly your requirement is. And we are happy to, we would be happy to guide you that how you can use MATLAB and Simulink for your project and what are the, what are the process involved into it. And uh, just to add one more thing, we have also created a Teams channel. And just to show you a glimpse, uh, uh, this is how the Teams channel would look like to you once you join it. And in that Teams channel, uh, this is a mechanism where um, uh, where we have created, uh, where we are accessible to you. And there are certain uh, information available where you can also see that the, the trial licenses are given. And there are various on-ramp courses available. So just like we saw lots of things which has uh, which has been shared in this session. So probably the question would come that probably I'm very new to MATLAB and Simulink, just like Prasanna told you. That we are very new to MATLAB and Simulink and we don't know how to start it with. So this is, these are the starting uh, point where you can, first of all, these are all self-paced training, free free of cost available. Once you install your uh, licenses, which is a, which is given for Sparkle, uh, you can go through all these on-ramp classes, uh, on-ramp courses. This will help you to get acquainted with the uh, product, MATLAB and Simulink. Or if you want to do some kind of controls uh, um, experimentation, you can do control design on-ramp with Simulink. And I would recommend that you get connected to us later on one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one basis, where we would be happy to understand your product and provide you that what is the right way of doing it uh, in in the in my MATLAB and Simulink? So uh, with this, I would like to um, end the session.